the scanned quarter inch seam allowance. What is it? Why do we need it? And how do we achieve it? In today's episode, we are going to be focusing on accurate piecing whilst making two traditional patchwork blocks, the Churn Dash and the Ohio Star. I'm going to take you through all my tips and tricks to achieving an accurate patchwork block. So let's get started. If you'd like to know more about Island Home, the fabrics and behind the scenes, check out our Island Home journal on our website. We will be adding entries as we make this quilt. So I learnt a lot in last week's lesson about the pinwheels because whilst filming I'm trying to actually learn how to cook, uh, cook. <laughs> lines on food. So while I've been editing the videos I've been learning a lot about quilting yeah. and I'm becoming a little bit obsessed so I've decided that I'm also going to be a student of Island Home and I'm going to take this all as a learning experience so I can make my own quilt one day. That's a great idea, so, I like that. Thank yeah. you. I learnt a lot in last week's video when making the pinwheels yep. and I actually now know how to make a half square triangle and I feel very accomplished. So what do you have in store for us this week? What are we learning and why is it really important for quilting? Okay, so first of all, the pinwheels are really beginner friendly. We just used a regular quarter inch seam allowance and we did that just to make things nice and easy. And that's also a flexible block, so we are going to bring it up to the correct size using a quilter to go border in upcoming episodes. But today, I actually wanted the video to be about quilter to go with pointy blocks. So pointy blocks meaning any block that has a point that finishes a quarter of an inch away from the edge. Because that is something, um, it's a question that comes up a lot how you would do that. So whereas last week um, we added a sashing, this week we don't want a sashing, we want to keep a continuous look. So this week's lesson was going to be, well it still is, quilt to go with pointy blocks. So pointy blocks are any block that has a point that finishes a quarter of an inch away from the edge. And that is a question that comes up a lot. How do I make a quilt, a quilt to go quilt with pointy blocks and without sashing in between? So we want them all to be together to create a lovely continuous look on your quilt. And then I realized whilst I was making the blocks that there's a lot involved with making an accurate patchwork block. Mm -hmm. And I really feel that um, during all of my teaching, I've found that um, some people are absolute naturals when it comes to making an accurate quilter or an accurate patchwork block with the points finishing a quarter of an inch away from the edge. And there are other people that have to work a little bit harder at it. And um, Which category are you? I definitely have to work a little bit harder to make an accurate patchwork block. Mm -hmm. And so I'm kind of always working on ways to make it a lot easier and understanding why it can be difficult too yeah. to do. So that's why we decided, what do you think? We're gonna break it into two parts and we're going to make two patchwork blocks. We're going to talk about the scant quarter inch seam allowance. Um, uh, as we sew it, I'm gonna give you as many tips as I can on how to make it nice and accurate. And then the next video will be the quilt as you go, joining pointy blocks together. What do you think? I think that sounds like a good idea because accurate piecing has always been one of the biggest deterrents for me getting into quilting ever. It's scary. It's scary, yeah. yeah that's why I've always leaned towards yeah. applique because if you have a lapse in concentration, yeah. it doesn't matter. You can pass it off as being creative. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, with accurate piecing, if you don't get it right, your block's gonna, yeah. That's exactly so right. So I'm excited. Yeah. All right, let's get into it. So Island Home episode two will be split into two separate videos so you don't miss a thing. If you would like to make the Island Home quilt or you would like written instructions for any of our Island Home episodes, you can purchase and download the Island Home course notes from our website. Head to patternpool.com for more information. Okay, let's get that scant quarter inch seam. So first of all, just to get a quarter inch seam, you could use a quarter inch foot. I have one with a guide, and then I have one without a guide. And this one here's actually from my Faf sewing machine, just to show the differences in the different model of machines or the different brands. 
Um, some people actually just like to use their standard foot and move the needle position over so the distance from the edge of the foot to the needle is a quarter of an inch. So to do that, if you haven't already done that, people who've been quilting for a long time know how to do this. I'm going to use a tape measure. Double check that the measuring device you're using, a ruler or a tape measure, is actually a, a true quarter of an inch. So just check that against other um, rulers and tape measures and I want to just bring my needle position over. If you don't know how to move your needle position, on most sewing machines, just go to straight stitch, and then when it shows the width, so I'm talking about computerized sewing machines here, where it shows the width, you just move the width as if you're going to change the size of a zigzag, but because we're on straight stitch, it's just going to stay straight, but it's gonna move the needle position over. Couple of tips too, that won't work if your needle is not in the highest position. So if you have your needle down like this and then you're moving it across, it won't move. So it's got to be in the highest position for your needle position to actually move. And then you've got to just bring it down and double check. So I'm just gonna bring that back a little bit and back a little bit again. So it's just a matter of bringing the needle down all the time. Um, and I'll just come back a little bit more. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So I now have a quarter inch seam guide from the edge of my foot to the needle. The next thing I want you to do is cut yourself some strips of fabric. So I just cut three inch and a half strips of fabric. They can be any length. These are about three inches wide. And then I sewed my seams. Now, when you're sewing your seam, um, some places where people actually get themselves into a little bit of trouble is when they're starting and when they're ending, sometimes they run off a little bit. So it's really important to stay consistent with that seam, your seam allowance all the way along when you're sewing. So this is my standard foot that I used here. I've sewn them together and I've pressed all of my seams in towards the darkest fabric. And then I'm going to measure it. So when I put my ruler on there, just to double check, this strip should now be one inch wide after having a quarter inch seam sewn on both sides. And look at that, it's a little bit less than one inch. So that's going to cause a problem when you're making an accurate block and your seams are supposed to be a quarter of an inch. So how come when I sewed a perfect quarter inch seam that when I pressed my pieces, it ended up less than what it should be? And that's because whenever you press, there's a bit of extra fabric that's actually taken up in the fold of the seam. We've got a bit of extra, it's being taken up there in also including the thread. So all those things going into account, well, I've got a seam on both sides, that is going to take up real estate of that quarter inch seam allowance. So this is why we need a scant quarter inch seam allowance. So we need to sew a seam that is slightly less than a quarter of an inch. So how are we going to achieve that? So my advice is, before you make a patchwork block, test your quarter inch seam allowance with three inch and a half strips, and then press your seam. You can try pressing it out and pressing it in, but you want that center strip to measure one inch exactly. So if your center strip doesn't measure one inch, you're going to need to work out how you are going to achieve a scant quarter inch seam allowance. So that's going to be easy enough if you are using your regular foot. So all we would have to do is move the needle position over one more little bit. And then when you bring the needle down, you'll see that it's just on the inside of the quarter inch mark. And sew another test. And if it's still not coming up at one inch for your center strip, you can then just move it over one more little space. So it just comes over a tiny amount each time. But what happens if you're using a regular quarter inch foot? How do you make that a scant quarter inch seam? So I have my quarter inch foot on and to use a quarter inch foot with most machines, the needle is in the center position. So I'm just going to bring my needle down like that. Look, not all quarter inch feet are the same, but I've got a great little trick here. And with my quarter inch foot, I have this hole in the center of it. And that hole, you know, it's not that tiny. And I realized that on my brother machine, and this may be the same with other machines too, I'm just gonna move the needle position over once, bring the needle down, it's nowhere near hitting the edge of the foot, and then I'm just going to do that one more time, and I find by moving the needle position over twice, that's still not hitting the foot in the center there, and so I've moved my needle over a fraction, and I can still use the edge of the foot as a guide, and I've worked out on my 
quarter inch foot without the guide, I can do the same thing. So you can try that with your machine. If the hole where the needle goes down is too small, it might hit the foot. So don't do it. So if you do want to try moving the needle position over whilst using a quarter inch foot, move it over, bring the needle down by hand using the wheel on the side. And if it's not hitting, then you're good to go. If it's hitting, please don't do it because you could put your machine out of timing. So this is what you do if you can't move your needle position over slightly because you have a tiny hole on your quarter inch foot. Okay, so just use your patchwork ruler. Be really careful to make sure that the needle doesn't go down because you will break a needle. And what I'm going to do is just move it over a fraction so I can just see that I'm going to have a little bit less than a quarter inch seam allowance. I just bring the needle down to double check. And then what I'm going to do is just, you can use masking tape or painter's tape and make sure that your ruler is sitting nice and straight. And then I'm just going to pop a piece of tape in just before the feed dogs there, like that. This isn't a bad idea to do um, anyway, because it's a really great way to help make sure that your um, piecing is going to be nice and straight. And I have seen some people, um, sometimes I like to use a double-sided tape because it's got that bit of sponge and it's a little bit thicker. And I do know that there are some people that like to um, make layers so that their tape is a little bit thicker and it gives them a little bit of a groove to run their fabric along. So go ahead and work out your perfect or scant quarter inch seam allowance. So let's start by making our churn dash block. These are my pieces, they're all cut out. All of the cutting instructions are in the part two course notes. So the first step is to mark a diagonal line from corner to corner onto both of the background squares. And that's on the wrong side of our fabric. Now place the background squares right sides together with the pattern squares. Now stitch a quarter of an inch either side of the marked line on both sides. and now cut on the marked line. Press towards the darkest color. So press your triangle with your darkest color on top, set the seam and then flip it over like that so that our seam is going towards the darkest color. Now trim your half square triangles back to a four and a half inch square. To trim your block, you can either use your six and a half inch by 24 inch patchwork ruler, or as you continue on with quilting, you may want to purchase extra rulers. So I'm going to use a six and a half inch square to trim this back to four and a half inches. So to do this, I'm just going to pop my 45 degree line on my ruler. I'm just going to run that on my center diagonal seam. And I can see that my block is a slightly bigger than four and a half inches. You might find that your block is already four and a half inches, but mine's a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to now trim up the side like that. Pop that on, that did move a little bit. And then across the top. Being careful, very careful with rotary cutters all the time. Then I'm just going to spin the block 
and pop the four and a half inch line on the left and across the bottom. I always like to have my number one in the top right hand corner but reverse that if you are right handed or left handed and trim me across the top. And there's my nice neat four and a half inch half square triangles. So go ahead and trim the rest of your half square triangles. So now for the fun part, let's lay out our block. So the pieces of our puzzle are all laid out now. So let's start by joining all of the rectangles. So a pattern rectangle to a plain rectangle. So starting off with your little leader and then working onto your rectangles, chain piecing them together. So do you always readjust before you sew? Yep, just to make sure that everything is nice and level. Don't forget to set that little pivot function like I mentioned in last week's lesson. That's really handy when you're sewing from piece to piece. Once again, press towards the darkest colour. So it's looking good. Now it's time to separate those pieces into three rows and sew the rows together. So now it's time to sew these pieces together and remember last week's tip where if you go to sew two pieces together and you've got the seam at the beginning, just flip the block, make sure that you're sewing on the right side though, just so that you don't have to contend with that bulk at the beginning of a seam. So you can see with this piece here, I have the seam at the top and sometimes that can get a little bit bulky when you go to start sewing. So I'm just going to flip it over like this, making sure that I am sewing on the correct side and then I'm just going to seam that together with the quarter inch seam allowance. So these edges should now be matching exactly. And as you go to sew, you can just push that seam down if it happens to be going against the foot. Then just chaining on to the next pieces. And now place the remaining squares onto their rows and head to the machine to sew them. By the way, this is my tailor's all. If you've watched our videos before, you'll see it's something that I always use. And if you don't have one of these, you can always use like the your unpicker or like a big hat pin. But it really helps when your seam needs a little bit of extra help to lay nice and flat when you go to sew. So here are my three rows. I'm going to press these seams here towards my darkest fabric. So away from the center. So that means that I want my seams to go in opposite directions. So these seams here are gonna go in towards the center. So let's do that now. So 
setting the seam and pressing the seam. You'll notice that I just take that little bit of extra time to smooth my seam over, make sure that the seam is really nice and open before I press it. So now we're gonna sew our rows together and we're gonna pin those seams to make sure that our seams line up as perfect as possible. So just in the same way that I showed you last week, take a pin, pop it in the stitching line. So you want that to go in about a quarter of an inch in from the edge, because that's where our seam's actually going to be sewn. And then bring it down into the underneath seam. Once again, about a quarter of an inch, or actually a quarter of an inch away from the edge. And then we're going to squeeze those two together and you can see that our seams are nesting because they're in opposite directions. So when that comes back, we're going to go back into the stitching line and back up and into the stitching line again. And I'm going to pop some pins in the outside edges just to make sure that everything is really going to line up. So put the pin a quarter of an inch in from the edge in the stitching line of our diagonal seam. And if you want to measure that, you can. And then back up again like that. So that way we're going to make sure when we sew, we are going to make sure that our point is going to finish that quarter of an inch away from the edge. So to sew these seams, I'm actually going to swap my foot from my quarter inch foot with the guide to my quarter inch foot without the guide. And the reason for that is that I sometimes find that the guide tends to um, be pushed away when the pins are going in sideways. And that's just gonna make it a bit easier for me to be able to sew and make sure that my seams line up perfectly. I've already checked that it's my scant quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm going to start sewing on the leader and then going straight onto my block. I'm not going to actually sew through my pin as I never recommend that it's a good idea to do that, but just very slowly working onto it. Once that catches and I'm almost at the pin, then I'll slide my pin out. Having the leader actually helps me be able to pull my fabric through and then just sliding that pin out. Looked like I sewed through the pin, but I actually didn't. Very carefully sewing, making sure that the edge of the fabric is on the edge of my foot. So very carefully working my way towards the pin. And when I'm a fraction away from my pin, I'll slide the pin out. This time, because my seam is actually going towards the foot, I'm going to use my tailor's awl to help that seam go underneath the foot. And I'm going to very, very slowly stitch up to my pin without sewing through it, of course, and then I'll slide that out. I'm going to use my tailor's awl as I approach the end just to make sure that the seam is staying nice and flat. Stitching up to the pin, not actually sewing through it and then sliding it out. So let's see if the seams line up. So I'm very happy with that. And also I'm just going to double check and see if my points are finishing a quarter of an inch away from the edge which they are. So this time I'm going to press the seam in towards the center. So set the seam. Make sure that the seam is going in towards the center and press the seam. Now sew the other side on in exactly the same way. So in the requirements list, I did mention these little fork pins by Clover, and I thought I'd just show you how they work to also help line your seams up. 
put your two seams together so that they are nesting and just have a little peek in there and make sure that yes, they're all lined up and nesting. The idea of these fork pins is that one pin goes, one side of the pin goes on either side of the seam in and then back again. And what that does is it just means that by having double pinning, there's no way, hopefully, that seam is going to move. All right, so nesting the seams, making sure that they're lining up nicely, and then just popping the pin in with one side of the pin going on either side of the seam, just like that. They're beautiful and fine pins. And the idea is that if you have the seam pinned in two places, then there's less chance of your seam moving as you go to sew. Once again, pin the corners also. Okay, I didn't really like the fork pin on the edge, so I'm actually going to go back to a normal pin and just pinning and making sure that my pin is a quarter of an inch in from the edge and going through that diagonal seam, the di diagonal stitching line. My machine really wants to go and fight the starting point. <laughs> but we did it. Oops, and without sewing through our pin. And you can use the leader to help pull it along a little bit. Very handy for that. So stitching up, sliding it out. If you have any little bit of um, waviness, you can just push that towards the foot. Slowly stitching up to our fork pin, slide it out. Another thing the tailor's all is good for is to, you know, just making sure that your seams are sitting edge to edge. So why did you have the waviness? So the waviness occurs when one of the pieces seems to be just a little bit bigger or looser than the underneath piece. So another way that you can overcome that is to sew with a smaller piece on top and that will easily ease the underneath in. And the other times that this happens is when your fabric is cut down the grain like that, so that's in the same direction as the selvage, that has no stretch or, or give. When your fabric is cut across the grain from selvage to selvage, that's when it has a little bit of stretch or a little bit of give. So probably with this piece, that's what has happened here. So I have a bit of a stretchy piece that I'm sewing on top of my underneath fabric, which is quite a solid piece. So that's why I got that little bit of easing. So if you have trouble trying to ease that in, just you may need to unpick and then just flip it over and sew with the more solid fabric on top. And let's open out and see how we went with matching our seams up. Quite happy with that. Very pretty. Now just have to head to the iron and give it a press. And that's our churn dash block finished. And don't forget to press that seam in towards the center of the block. So there's our churn dash block. Let's set that aside and make the Ohio star block now. So this is what you need to make the Ohio star. The cutting instructions are in the course notes. So the two squares that are the same fabric, they're going to make the star points. The dark blue is going to make the inner triangle.
So we've got some larger squares and some smaller squares. So we're just gonna pop these smaller squares aside. And with these larger squares, we're going to make some quarter square triangles. So with the quarter square triangles, because we do have um, lots of seams, I have made them a little bit bigger so that we're going to make the quarter square triangles and then trim them back to the correct size. So to do this, we're going to just flip our two of the squares over like this. So we've got two that are the same and then I've got a contrasting one which is a dark blue and then a plain fabric. So onto the wrong side of our contrast and plain or background fabric, just going to start with the diagonal line going from corner to corner. Just like that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our contrast and put it onto our lighter patterned fabric and we're going to do the same with our background fabric and we're going to head to the sewing machine and stitch a quarter inch either side of that marked line just in the same way that we have done before. So I've put my quarter inch foot with a guide back on the machine only because I quite like to use this foot when I'm sewing either side of the marked line. It's quite handy to have the guide running along the marked line but you can just use your standard um, quarter inch foot to do this. Cut them in half on the marked lines. Press all of the seams towards the star point fabric. Just like that. So we'll now have four half square triangles, two that have the star point fabric and the background, and another two that have the star point fabric and the inner triangle fabric. Now let's turn these into quarter square triangles. So take one that has the star point and background fabric and put it right sides together with one that has the star point and inner triangle fabric. So we're going to put them right sides together. We just wanna make sure that the star point fabric is sitting on the opposite sides of the square now. So just like that. Our seams will be going in opposite directions so they will nest in quite nicely together. Now mark another diagonal line going from corner to corner and this time it's going to mark across that seam. So you guessed it, we're now going to stitch either side of the marked line, so a quarter inch from the marked line. But let's make sure that our seams are going to line up exactly. So let's pop some pins in through the seam, so through the stitching line on one side and making sure that it's going to come back up on the other side. So I'm going to pin about an inch away from the marked line just to make sure that these pins aren't going to get in the way of the foot when I'm sewing. So I've gone into the stitching line there like that, back up into the stitching line on the back and then just bringing it back again and back again like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So making sure that my square is lined up as best as possible. Using finer pins is always much easier to pin through patchwork weight fabrics. Have a little peek on the inside if necessary. That's good. Fix that one up a little bit. Take your time with the pinning, it's what really makes these blocks come out being nice and lined up. And this is another place where those fork pins will come in handy. So you just can link those seams in so they're going to nest and you can feel that they are nicely, nice and tight and nested. And then just pop the pin in on either side of the stitching line. So now that I'm pretty sure my seams are pinned nicely, I'm just going to stitch a quarter of an inch either side of the marked line on both sides, just like we did before. 
and a little tip is when I go to sew, I sew in the direction where the seam is facing towards me rather than sewing against the seam, just in case that flicks up a little bit. Of course, when I come back the other way, I am going to have the seam going towards the foot. So it's just a matter of making sure that it is going to sit nice and flat when you sew over the seam. And another little tip is just, I would mentioned it before with the quarter inch seam, make sure that when you get to the end, don't run off in an angle this way or an angle that way, just concentrate on sewing nice and straight as you sew off the edge of the triangle. Before you cut on the marked line, just have a little peek inside and make sure that your seams are lining up nicely. If all is good, then cut on the marked line. Now press the seams away from the darkest fabric. So for me, I'm going to be pressing my seams away from my background fabric. And here are four quarter square triangles. We now need to trim the quarter square triangles back to four and a half inch squares. So you can do that either with your long ruler or if you've got a smaller ruler, that will also be probably a little bit easier. But for those of you that have just started patchwork and you only have the 24 inch by six and a half inch ruler, I'm gonna show you how to do this with the big ruler. So basically what you need to do is put the number one in the top right hand corner, just reverse this if you are left-handed and you want to locate the 45 degree line. So we're going to run that along the diagonal seam. Now the next thing we need to do is find our center. So half of four and a half is two and a quarter. So we want to take the two and a quarter inch line, pop that right in that center join there and then also two and a quarter inches coming down from that top edge. So making sure that that's nice and straight and then also double check over here and make sure that our block is bigger than four and a half inches. And we are just going to trim up the top, or oh, sorry, <laughs> across the side, and then across the top like that. Then you spin the block and you place the trimmed edge on the left hand side and the bottom edge. And now all you need to do is locate the four and a half inch line, which is here and here, and we're just going to place those level on our trimmed edges. Make sure that the diagonal line is running on the, di the diagonal seam and making sure everything's nice and even and trimming up the side and across the top. And there is a perfect quarter square triangle that is four and a half inches finished. Now go ahead and trim the rest of your quarter square triangles in the same way. Now lay out the pieces to make the star. So once again, separate the block into three rows. Sew the blocks together to make the rows and then join the rows together, pinning those seams in the way that I showed you so that our seams line up as perfectly as they can. So here's a little tip. Make sure that the grain line is going down in all of our background squares. And the reason for that is when you have a little pull on the fabric, across the grain's a little bit stretchy and down the grain is solid. So let's have all of those solid grain lines going straight down. Makes it a bit easier to sew together.
So I'm actually going to break the rules and press towards the lightest color. And the reason for that is that if I was to press my seam in towards my star points, there's a lot of bulk there in that seam. So sometimes it's okay to break the rules and also I just find that um, my fabric's not that light and by the time we echo quilt around the edge it's not going to be noticeable if there is a little shadow showing through. So I'm going to press all of the seams towards the cream or my background fabric this time. Now do the squares on the other side. So once again, breaking the rules and pressing the seam towards the background fabric. And now join the rows together. So once again, you'll see that our seams are pressed in the opposite direction. So they're going to nest in together nicely. So this time you're going to see that you've got this stitching line on the diagonal. So pop your pin in there at that junction where the stitching lines cross over. That should actually be a quarter of an inch away from the raw edge of the fabric. And then I'm going to take that pin and pop it through in the junction there where those seams meet, just like that. Nesting those seams. And then bringing the pin back and through the stitching line. Just double check that it's going through the stitching line on the opposite side. Sometimes it's not, so you've just got to have a little bit of a play there. And just like that. So go ahead and pin those rows together. You'll see that the seams are going in opposite directions, so you're just going to nest those in together. Pin the outer edges in the same way and feel free to add some extra pins if you like. And sew that seam. Now because this is our stretchy side of the fabric, it may be a little bit loose at times. So just ease in with the awl or an unpicker or a big pin. So feel free to really take your time with these across ways seam. People think that I sew really fast, but I don't. I'm actually sewing very slowly and carefully just to avoid having to come back and unpick. Moment of truth, let's have a look. Happy with that. So with these seams, you could either press them in or you could press them out, but I'm just going to think a little bit ahead and grab my churn dash block and just sit that next to it. And I can see that with my churn dash block, I have pressed the seams in towards the center row. So I'm going to press these ones out. So my seams are going to go in opposite directions so they'll nest together when I join the two blocks together. So thinking ahead is always a good idea. So don't forget to set the seam. That's when you press the seam before you open it. It really does make a difference. When you open it out, smooth it out, first of all, with your fingers so that you're not going to have any creases. Press the seam nice and flat. Mm -hmm. 
and then sew the bottom row on just in exactly the same way. And here's my block finished. This is the front. And this is what it looks like from the back. So as you can see, these two blocks are going to sit in this section of the quilt. Do you like our big life-size plan that we've made? Gives you an idea of where everything's going to go. Now choose two completely different fabrics that you haven't used in this block here because we're going to bring these fabrics in elsewhere so that we have a really nice balanced quilt. So in part 2B, I'm going to show you how to square up your blocks and trim them if necessary. And then I'm going to show you how to quilt as you go with pointy blocks. So I'll see you in the next lesson. I hope you enjoyed this one. Bye.